right. Turn with me in your Bibles uh, to uh, Mark chapter number 13, verse 21 through 37. If there's an empty seat by you, can you just scoot in towards the middle aisle? The middle aisle. So everybody, scoot in towards the middle aisle. Amen. So nobody has to step over your Air Force Ones, your new suede shoes, your bare feet in the wintertime. Amen. Just scoot on in so it'll be easier for folks to be able to get on in here in the name of the Lord. Advent is a, such an important part of the Christian liturgical calendar. Uh, if this is your first time uh, going through a season of Advent, uh, it is the time where the church uh, kind of starts our calendar over. Uh, as you may or may not know, how many know we operate on a different schedule than the rest of the world? Amen. That just blew right past about 90% of y'all. Amen. But y'all that know what I'm talking about, that's some good news. Amen? Amen. Y'all want to catch up to that? Praise God. I don't know. How many of y'all know we live on a different time schedule than the rest of the world? Amen? But there's God's timing, and then there's the timing of this world. And Advent is the beginning. It is the starting anew of the Christian calendar, whereby we prepare ourselves, reflect, think, and celebrate. The coming of Jesus, because if Jesus had not come, then we would have nothing to not only celebrate, but look to for our salvation. You may see some of the, the, the themes up here is purple and blue. Amen. And, and, and these themes actually represent certain kinds of concepts and ideas in the liturgical calendar. And so I thought it'd just be cool as you turn to Mark chapter number 13. To, to just think a little bit and give you a little bit of the meaning of these colors. Purple is one of the Advent colors for this uh, liturgical season uh, that stands for royalty. It is, in many respects, reminding us of the sovereignty of Jesus. And Jesus being sovereign just means that uh, Jesus got it all under control. That Jesus has the power to fix anything. Amen. And again, that's some good news, particularly for some of us who have a lot of hot messes going on right now. You ought to thank God for Advent. Amen. It also symbolizes repentance and fasting. Amen. So this is a good season for some of us to get our practices back activated. Blue signifies the waters of new creation. Amen. That God is always ready to make some old things new. Amen. That's some good news for some of us as well who tired of the old. Amen. God wants to do something new. And so as you look at these colors, I hope they catalyze your senses a little bit and everything that you hear, everything that is discussed over the next several weeks. We're going to have some great preachers coming through here along with myself and others to, to help lift this up. I pray these these colors and these themes will penetrate your heart and give you a little bit of extra uh, incentive or, or, or impetus to, to not let Advent just be another Christmas season. But for the child of God, for we who follow the ways of Jesus, this is one of the best days of the year. Amen. And we're going to celebrate it together. Mark chapter number 13 is then our lectionary passage. And pray for me, amen. We, we had a good time with uh, our pastor, my bishop, and, and Lady Days down in Bible Way. Last night, our, our, our friend Marvin Sapp was in the house, and he was preaching and singing. And, and a lot of us was singing along and hollering and screaming, and, and I ain't got no voice. So I'm not going to do a whole lot of hollering and screaming today unless y'all push me to do it. Praise God. Otherwise, I'm going to sit down on this chair, and I'm going to lecture. No, I'm just playing. We, 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 I'm going I'm to I'm 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 preach. I have no fear. But, uh, but pray, pray my strength, pray my voice, because it is a little raspy, and, uh, and that's quite a challenge. Mark chapter number 13, verse 21. If you have it, say, I got it. All right, we're reading from the message translation. It should be on the screen. It should be on the screen. Yeah, we're going to have a good a good season of talking about some good news. Uh, verse number 21 of Mark chapter number 13. Now, many believe Mark was the first gospel that was written. That Mark uh, is attributed to writing down the eyewitness account of Peter. If you're a Bible student, if you know anything about the, the New Testament, Peter was one of the early 
uh, disciples who started to follow Jesus, and he was in Jesus' inner circle. He was, uh, uh, it was Peter, James, and John. And, and Peter was one of them fighting Jesus followers. Amen. He cussed folk out and chopped people's ears off and did all kind of things that Jesus had to work on Peter until the day Peter died. Amen. That's good news for some of you. Amen. I'm, I'm trying to give you all a lot of good news today. Because <laughs> there ain't too many ready-made Christians, amen, in the world. You may not have been a cussing, fighting Christian, but you sure enough still got something that Jesus got to work on you till the day you die. Is there any real folk witnessing in the house about that? Amen. So Peter was one of these folk. He was a fisherman, and, and it's, it's important to appreciate that a lot of the oral stories and testimonies of the disciples uh, were not written by the disciples themselves because not everyone was literate back in these days. People are like, oh, why he didn't write it himself? Because he was a fisherman. He wasn't no, he wasn't no, 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 no scholar, no, 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 no. He didn't teach at the University of Rome. He could write a, a message to you. But God sent a comrade, and Mark was his comrade, and evidently Mark had a degree, and he could write, and he captured the eyewitness testimony of Peter. So some folks say, oh, that's second, third-hand information. No, this is the way the, the, the cultures of the day transmitted information. And uh, for all of us who hate on the way they transmitted, and people all the way during the holiday time to try to tell you that this is contrived story, somebody made it up, and I just try to help folks to... Remember, amen, that God preserved these stories so you and I could always have an account that Jesus lived. Jesus came, he died, and he gave us some good news. And so uh, have some good confidence. Don't get hung up on Peter didn't write it himself. He wasn't literate in the sense he could write. And I, I know some of you on Facebook, just by reading your post, you're not that literate either. So, amen. <laughs> not here at the way. You know, I have a lot of followers. Especially with the trolls that come to my page. Anybody ever had a troll come to your page? And they just misspelling everywhere. You don't know if they cussing you out or giving you a compliment. They can't spell so good. Mm -hmm. All right. Y'all pray for me. Good news. Somebody holler good news. Mark chapter number 13. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to get in trouble when we get in the car. <laughs> All right, here we go. Mark 13, verse number 21. If anyone, somebody say anyone. If anyone tries to flag you down, calling out, here's the Messiah, or points, there he is, don't fall for it. Fake messiahs and lying preachers are going to pop up everywhere. Their impressive credentials and dazzling performances will pull the wool over the eyes of even those who ought to know better. So watch out. I've given you fair warning. For following those hard times, the sun will fade out. Moon clouds over. The moon will cloud over, stars will fall out of the sky, and the cosmic powers will tremble. And then they'll see the Son of Man enter in grand style, his arrival filling the sky. No one will miss it. He'll dispatch the angels, and they will pull in the chosen from the four winds, from pole to pole, Take a lesson from the fig tree from the moment you notice its bids form the merest hint of green. You know summer's just around the corner. And so it is with you when you see all these things, you know Jesus is at the door. Don't take this lightly. I'm not just saying this for some future generation, but for this generation too. These things will happen. Sky and earth will wear out, but my words won't wear out. Jesus continues and says, and they'll see the Son of Man entering into, did I read that already? 
no idea. And they'll see the Son of Man entering oh, just like this. It's not on my notes. But the exact day and hour, no one knows that not even heaven's angels, not even the Son, only the Father. So keep a sharp lookout. For you don't know the timetable. It's like a man who takes a trip, leaving home, putting his servants in charge, each assigned a task, and commanding the gatekeeper to stand watch. So stay at your post watching. You have no idea. Somebody say no idea. When the homeowner is returning, whether it's evening, midnight, the cock crow, or morning, you don't want the owner showing up unannounced with you asleep. On the job, I say it to you and I'm saying it to all. Stay at your post. Stay awake. The word of God for us, the people of God, let us say thanks be to God. I mean, the easiest sermon title would be stay woke. Amen. But that's, that's just, I think I'll preach stay woke at least 50 times since, since woke became a thing. But it is important to stay woke. You ought to give your neighbor a high five and just tell them, I'm just telling you, stay woke. But, 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 we got to talk about what you need to be woke about. Because there are a lot of folk who think they woke. Or they woke, but it's not helping them. Matter of fact, anyone met someone that is so woke, you wish they would just go back to sleep? <laughs> like, <laughs> My, my, my. So today's sermon topic is simply going to be fake news, bad news, and good news. Fake news, bad news, and good news. Now, as we talked about Advent earlier, it is important to appreciate again that Jesus coming, some regarded as fake news. I want to suggest that for some, it's bad news. And for us who are the people of God, we hopefully already know it is good news. But we are living consistently in a time where we are bombarded with all kinds of news. And just like this image where you have someone uh, with some papers and they're trying to proclaim to you a message and want you to read all about it. Read all about it. Read, hear, listen, see all these things that are happening around us. There is a need for us in the season of Advent to wrestle with the reality that there is a perpetual stream of good news that the church is tasked with proclaiming even in the era of fake news and certainly in a season of bad news. Now, depending on your orientation to the world, it is indeed the facts of life that you can have too much access to news. Hello, somebody. Amen. Anybody ever tripped off how when you don't watch the news, I'm talking about, you know, uh, the, the news like on the, on the news, like TV news, that your, your life, at least you, you can kind of check out a little bit and you don't feel as overwhelmed because the news always leads with bad news. I mean, na -na 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 -na. you're like, oh, no, okay. The sky fell today. You're like, oh, man. And then they have a nice, uh, what, what do you call those? Stories? Interest story. The last 30 seconds of the sports, of the, of the newscast. Today, someone saved a cat out of the tree. Oh, uh, see you next time. And you just like, you spent 
20 minutes giving me a lot of bad news. Certainly, depending on which network you're watching, you're getting some fake news. And you rarely get any good news. Now, let's come off the TV and just look in your life. We, we going to look in your life, then we're going to come out of it, because I know we can only take our life in doses. <laughs> How many have ever been around somebody who had a lot of fake news about you, your life, your person, your family, your situation? Anybody? Folks, just, what? Who, who made you the reporter of my life? Man, you know, like you got a Dear Abby column on my life. And I'm trying to figure out. How did that happen? Because, you know, I didn't commission you to do that. And often people can specialize in spreading fake news. You know, if I were going to use a biblical term, I would just say lie. You just lie. Just lie. Lie on you. Lie on everything you do. Uh, you know, when I was doing my drug and alcohol counseling classes, uh, they used to tell me, you know, how do you know an addict is lying? Their mouth is moving. I said, Ooh, touch your neighbor. I was like, I know people like that, and they don't even have the burden of drug addiction. Amen. And you start talking, just lie, 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 lie. And what do we often say? You ain't got the lie, Craig. Amen. All right? Somebody say fake news. Then you often have people who are promulgating a lot of bad news. And, 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 you know, you and I always have a choice to focus on what we will amplify. Now, clearly this week, there's been a lot of bad news. Well, I must say for a while, depending on who you are and how you are oriented to the world, bad news can come at us in waves. But if any of us who are people living on the underside of the American empire, we've experienced some bad news this week. Now, this is where, you know, watching the news is both a blessing and a curse because you need to kind of know what's going on so you can know how to fight and resist. But, you know, it was so troubling to see all these elected officials and politicians pass this tax bill that pretty much is going to create what most believe is the largest transfer of wealth in our lifetime to people who don't need any more money. And what was most sad for me, a couple things, you know, because I, I and we are work, we are pretty active. And, 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 and folks are asking, you know, what can we do, Pastor Mike? And, and, and I honestly, I don't think, I didn't think there was anything we can do. Because these folk are so full of the devil that they will not change their mind. Even if you bring disabled folk up and down the hall and in the in the office, you know what they'll do to them? Arrest them. Sick children being brought on buses to compel these folk not to make these decisions. And you know what they'll do to them? Put them right back on the bus and send them home. And I'm trying to say, if the sick and disabled can't change your mind, I don't know what some radical resistance people going to do to change these people's minds. So, we're going to have to change their mind by sending them home in 2018 and vote them out of office. Praise God. Hello, somebody. But it was so sad to realize that we have people who are in power, quote, unquote, whose heart is so filled with greed that they are willing to do things that have never been done before to benefit the people who don't need any more help. And some of these folks claim to be Christians. And I'm just dumbfounded. I'm stupefied. I'm flabbergasted. I am just... You know, 
If I was not taught by my parents the song Amazing Grace when I was a child, I would think none of these folk got a chance. But grace is something that I can't even, I can't even. So, I, you know, I, I don't know. I'm going to leave that up to God. But I sure want these folks to stop saying they're Christians. Because they are just some terrible Christians. How are you going to take all this from folk on the first weekend of Advent? You think at least you wait till the new year or something. Let Jesus, let Jesus come so we can sing joy to the world or something. Hello, somebody. Bad news, I was terribly dismayed by the Libya slave trade pictures. Anyone saw all this bad news this week? Amen. Just trying to give you some context on some bad news. And what was most disheartening to me were the images they were showing of some of the Nigerian loved ones fleeing their war-torn country to go to Libya. Now, you got to appreciate this is why just being black or African ain't no salvation in that. Because Libyans are African. You know, just like Egypt's African. Did y'all know that? And, you know, you look at the continent, they, they in there. <laughs> People want to be Egypt, not Africa. It's like, well, ain't that convenient? Egypt ain't Africa when we started everything over there. Amen. Egypt show ain't Europe. Amen. It ain't Asia. I'm trying to figure out what you got left. <laughs> Give your neighbor a high five and tell them Egypt's Africa. Amen. Libya's Africa. Hallelujah. So we see, listen, that wickedness is everywhere. Folk get so proud. I'm, I'm proud to be black and African, but there ain't no salvation in being African proud or African black or whatever. we, Because we see that the images, they taking people's organs. They showed the pictures. Of these Individuals with these wounds stitched up look like they just were seared shut. I'm trying to figure out who does that to another human being. Bad news. Oh, Jesus. Then, of course, I'm always burdened by the persistent violence in our own country, our own community. Pookie, Ray Ray, Paco out here harming each other, disturbed by their, all the sexual abuse and sexual assault and all this bad news. And so, so it is important for you and I to appreciate that the follower of Jesus is not being asked or expected to block out bad news or to ignore it. But when we come to the good news, we are being commanded to do several things, always proclaim it, always expect it, and always participate in it. And this is what Advent does for us. It gives you and I a concrete button to start over the year of good news. And if you like me, I could always use a good start over, particularly when I'm overwhelmed by fake news and bad news. I always need God to just, all right, I'm going to put a bow on that because that was one heck of a year. And now we're going to get the good news going again. And the great thing about being a follower of Jesus, aware of the timing of God, is that God gives us a month head start on everybody else. Hello, somebody. Uh, some of us, some of us need a month's head start. Because we've had too much fake good, fake news and bad news. And so God is like, I'm not going to wait till January to remind you that you are people of good news. But I'm going to give you a month to get yourself together. You ought to pat yourself on the chest and say, I got to get myself together. Because there is some good news that is here. So when you and I take seriously this idea that there is good news, somebody say good news, then we have to then figure out what am I to do with fake news and what am I to do with bad news. The first thing that you got to appreciate around fake news is you must acknowledge 
Fake messiahs will always deliver fake news. Verse 22 says, fake messiahs and lying preachers are going to pop up everywhere. Somebody say everywhere. Now, one of the great challenges I believe for you and I is we have to be willing and able to figure out who are the fake messiahs that are inserting themselves in our lives. There are a lot of folk out here who show up claiming to bring salvation to your family, to your community, to your, your situation. And often, if we are not attuned to the reality that there are folk who can talk a good talk, who even according to this passage, it says that they will have impressive credentials and dazzling performances. Anybody ever been seduced by somebody with some good credentials? They, 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 they could perform whatever you needed them to perform. They could do it in a way that would move you to action, move you beyond the, the, the despair of your situation and yet their deliverance, listen, only lasted for a season. Fake messiahs don't have the ability to bring us permanent salvation. Uh-huh. Fake messiahs can jump in your life and get you all riled up. But when the thing gets too difficult, the weight of your life will crush their fake news. And this is what is happening right now. We have people out here who are believing the fake messiahs. And understand, this is everybody, all of us. We can easily be seduced by fake messiahs. I mean, it is so interesting because we always can point to everybody else's fake messiah. I, and I'm, again, I'm just going to be honest because I'm, I'm, I'm in the place. This, this, this sermon is for me, so I hope y'all get something out of it. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. But I, I can look at, oh, how, how is you believing what they saying? How are you following them? These people is so fake. I mean, if they, 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 they lie, nothing they says matches up. They have no integrity. And you giving them all kind of license to speak into your life. You following their advice. You shaping your life around their ideas, fake messiahs. What's up with that? You know, I'm good at that till, you know, the messiah that I like tells me what I want to hear. And it resonates with me so deeply that I need the real messiah to crack open the clouds of glory and send a thunderbolt my way. To help me realize <laughs> some fake news, McBride. Anybody ever been there before? You, you, you have you have given too much time to fake messiahs. And they tell you things that sound good. Oh, I'm gonna give you this tax bill, and everybody's gonna get more money. Now, that is what many people want to hear. In a capitalistic, greedy, materialistic, exploitative economy, everybody wants more money. More money, 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 money. Oh, thank you, Jesus. That's what I, money come to me. I want more money. God, if you could just give, don't, you ain't got to heal me. Just give me some more money. Because if you give me money, then I'll just go buy me a new body, a new something, or new health. Just give me more money. How many know that's how many of us pray? God, I just want more money. I mean, you don't be that crass with it because you have a little respect for God. But you showing up, be God, give me a raise. I need a promotion. God, I need a bigger house. You got a house with empty rooms and you want a bigger house. You got a car with empty seats and you want a bigger car. You got a closet full of shoes and you want one more pair. Touch your neighbor. We don't, we, we're not crass with it, but we've been seduced by the fake messiah of capitalism. The fake messiah of racial hierarchy. 
the fake messiah of patriarchy, the fake messiah of drugs, and the fake messiah of, of power, and, and we give our lives to this fake messiah. But when this fake messiah start working and do what it do, then you realize, wait a second, that ain't saving nothing. As a matter of fact, it is stealing my life. You and I have to be people who can discern between the fake messiahs, the lying preachers, those prognosticators, those folk that know you well enough to manipulate and tell you what you want to hear so they can get the best part of you and leave you there by yourself at the end. What helps you be able to have discernment against the fake messiahs? Well, I think you got to put on some sunglasses that will help you block out the dazzling performances. Not S-U-N glasses, but S-O-N glasses. The filter of the Son of Man. The the, the prince of peace, the, the lily in the valley, the bright and morning star, sunglasses. Somebody say sunglasses. Some of you got some stunner shades. You need to have some stunner shades that have the sun filter on them. And it's something that you, you want to look all swagged out and all great in your stunner shades. I, I, I tried some of them on one time. And my hair was a little too big for it, so it, it didn't work out. But one such, one such stunner shade that I tried on was not very effective in blocking out the sun. And so it appeared to me that this is not to block out sunlight. This is to make me look good. Ain't it something that we can misuse? Things that are created for a particular purpose, so you can look better, feel better. You don't want to be better. Sure enough, don't want to do better. <laughs> I feel like preaching in here. I ain't got no voice to do it, though, so I'm just going gonna, gonna to have to teach it all the way. But you ought to tell your neighbor, forget about your feelings and forget about your looking. You need to do better. Hello, somebody. Because if you do better, you may, I don't know, some, you may look better if you do better. But you sure enough will feel better when you do better. Questions. Let's look at the questions here. The first question is, are you giving too much attention to the fake messiahs in our lives? What must you do to put on your sun glasses? Jesus is coming. Jesus has already come. Jesus will come again. This is one of the oldest creeds in the Christian church. If Jesus has come, will come, and will come again, you need to walk around with the reality that the Son, Jesus, the ways of Jesus, the truths of Jesus, must be the filter for how you move through the world. And I know the, the sunglasses, these sunglasses I'm talking about, will always, not always, they will often make you and I feel like we are on the losing side. But listen, that's fake news. Fake messiahs will give you fake news. They will lie to you and make you feel like if you follow the ways of Jesus, you are on the losing side. But guess what? Jesus has always shown himself to be capable of taking the worst apparent defeat and turning it into our greatest victory. Fake messiahs can't do that. Fake messiahs going to absorb the loss and be like, man, I'm sorry. I tried. On to the next one. Who else life can I mess up? 
Jesus is going to stay right there. You ought to give your neighbor a high five and tell him avoid the fake messiahs. Second thing that you need to appreciate is that bad news. You're going to have bad news, but listen, there's a difference between bad news and hard times. Now, Jesus coming is bad news for sin-filled powers. Jesus showing up is bad news for folk who don't want to stop sinning. If you want to stop sinning, it's good news because Jesus will come and give you a little hookup, give you a way out, give you some instructions. But there's a lot of folk in the world that ain't trying to stop being led and overdetermined by sin. Look at the text. It says simply, following those hard times. Somebody say hard times. You're going to have some hard times, child of God. And so all these bad things that we mentioned before, even though it's hard and even though it's difficult, in a fallen world, hard times are a part of living. It says in the last days, perilous times will come. And many of us, you know, we, 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 we know what it's like to have hard times. And it ain't political hard times many of us are consumed with every day. Some of us in our families and in our relationships and even in ourselves, hard times. But look what the scripture says, following hard times. Somebody say following. That means your hard time season is time bound. We sing a song, Timothy, right? I'm so glad. Hey, trouble don't last always. Y'all know nothing about that song. But I'm so glad. Next week you learn it. Amen. Trouble don't last always. Come on, girl. I'm so glad. Hey. Trouble don't last. Trouble don't last always. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. No, 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 no. I sounded like a huh? Trouble don't last. Then it throws in the scripture says, Weep in May, weep in May, endure for night. Keep the faith, it will be all right. Weep in May, endure for night. Keep the faith, it will be all right. Last always, because that's the part to get real good to you. Because there's something about us that needs to be reminded that trouble won't last always. But there's some folk who want to make sure your trouble lasts longer than it should. And for those folk, Jesus coming is bad news for them. You see, what I want you to appreciate today is that bad news is reserved in this sermon, if you will, for those who are wicked and overdetermined by oppression and exploiting other people. Jesus coming is bad news for those who want to maintain systems and sources of oppression and bondage. When Jesus is coming to set people free. Jesus coming is bad news for people who are so committed to being agents of death and, and, and agents of pain. And agents of, 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 of destruction that when Jesus comes, it's bad news because Jesus is coming to turn some things right side up. And then what I need you and I to appreciate, as it says in the text, is that following the hard times, the stars are going to fall from the sky and cosmic powers will tremble. tremble. Two things. People who, who, who present themselves to be stars, these false temporary sources of light, when Jesus comes, they've fallen from the sky.
cosmic powers will, trem will tremble. You know what it means to tremble, right? They're going to be shaking in their boots. Why? Because when Jesus comes, the powers of this age can't stand up against the coming of Jesus. Now, for all of us who are committed to changing the world, changing your family, changing your community, this is good news. Because it's reminding us that when Jesus shows up, even those powers that look undefeatable are not only trembling, but they're already defeated. They're already defeated. It's like, anybody ever watch Harlem Globetrotters and uh, who the team, who they used to play, the Nationals? And you go, people would pay all kind of money. We used to do it. Sit up in the stand and watch the Harlem Globetrotters just run circles around the Nationals. Now, of course, a lot of it was staged, but, you know, you knew it was a guaranteed loss for the Nationals. Some of our favorite sports teams, I, I, I'm not going to keep talking about the Niners and the Raiders and the, my Lakers, you know, just keep losing. I mean, you know, guaranteed loss. But people still pay to go watch them. It's something. Try to figure out, I, you know, I'm not one of these fair weather fans, but when it comes to paying to watch, boy, I'm about as fair weathered as you can get. I will watch you on my TV. So if it gets too bad, I'm not watching this. But for me to be devoted enough to sit outside in the cold, the hot, listen to people cuss, swear, drunk, fall downstairs, fight for a losing product? No, no, no. It's bad news. <laughs> it's bad news. But you and I must be able to distinguish between hard times that are time bound and the bad news that is reserved for those who are committed every day to oppressing the God in you, the divine presence of God in our community, and certainly God's will in the earth. Jesus coming is bad news for a lot of folk. I think Jesus coming is bad news for a lot of these people who think that they on the Lord's side. And Jesus was real clear about it. He said, some of y'all don't know who y'all are. Y'all claiming me, but I am not claiming you. I'm not. And that's rough because, again, we all believe who Jesus is claiming. And we all think we in that number. But Lord, help me to be honest with God and myself that I'm not the source of anybody's fake or bad news. Question for your reflection. Can you distinguish between hard times, time bound, and bad news? There are a lot of people who will say, oh, you're going through because you did something terrible. Well, you're going through because you're human. We live in a fallen world. I didn't do nothing to, 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 to wish or to create this evil that's hitting our people all over the place, we got to live through it. And, and the sad reality is some of us won't make it. I, 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 I wrote on my Facebook page, you know, I think it was 2 or 3 in the morning. I got to start writing on Facebook and tweeting. I've deleted so many tweets in the middle of the night because I'm just angry. I wake up, I'm just angry. And I, I wrote, I, I wish black people had an army because we are so unprotected in the world. Then I realized we do got an army. Amen. And, 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 and you know, so, so do every other oppressed people in the world. We are part of the army of God. And Jesus is our general. And we are marching onward to Zion. This is my last point before we prepare to take communion today. Good news. This is the good news, that you are an angel dispatched to carry good news. Angels carry good news, y'all. And I love it in this passage where it says 
that Jesus' arrival will fill the sky and no one will miss it. And God will dispatch angels. Woo! That's some good news. That you and I have been dispatched as angels in a world overrun by fake and bad news. And we are the ones with the memory that God is doing something. That even when my own life feels overrun by bad news and fake news, I've been dispatched as an angel with some good news. Oh, don't, 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 don't do that yet. The good news is important for you to remember that you are carrying it as an angel. Why? Because if you forget you are an angel, you will think you are the Messiah. And there is a burden that the Messiah carries that an angel does not have the strength or the assignment to bear. This is good news, child of God, that our salvation and our liberation does not rest on your shoulders alone. But that all you and I have to do is bear witness that we got some good news. Wouldn't it be something if you really believe that all God is asking you to do is show up in some situations and bear witness that the world as it is now is not how God intends for it to be? Wouldn't it be something if you showed up in your household, not there to fight and argue and force something to happen, but just to be a reminder that we got some good news, family. Show up in your neighborhood and help people remember you don't have to live this way. Show up in City Hall. Show up at the governor's uh, mansion. Show up at the White House and the outhouse and the Congress. And I'm just here to bear witness. Some of my friends this week, got themselves arrested in the Capitol building because they decided to read 2,000 verses. They didn't go in there fighting with anybody. This is what you should do. Oh, you, because that's what I did. That's why they leave me at home. They only bring me when they want a lot of rebel rousing. But sometimes they just want to be peaceful. And so I said, okay, well, I'll sit this one out. But y'all call me now. You know, I'm a Rockefeller outrage, praise God. No, I, I can be, I can be, uh, 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 one of those uh, nice protesters. And that's what they were doing, reading scriptures. But I got to tell you, I, you see, a lot, the problem with some of us, we don't read the scripture. So we don't know what's in it. We know what's preached to us. Hello, somebody. We know what's preached to us. And so if you go to a church and the only thing they're preaching to you is health, wealth, prosperity, American uh, uh, imperialism, uh, racism, hegemony, misogyny, patriarchy, uh, 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 war. Did I say imperialism already? I think so. Violence, murder, uh, rape. And, and that's all they preach it to you in the, in the scripture. Then you'll be like, oh, I'm a Bible believing. That's how this guy down here in, in Alabama think he a Christian. Because he not heard the thousands of scriptures that say, woe unto you who pass unjust laws and, and, and terrorize the poor. He not read that scripture. So he don't, he don't, and then when you tell it to him, you know what they said? That's not in the Bible. <laughs> That's not in your Bible. Because you're not reading the Bible. You reading, listen, this is what they taught us in, in seminary, a canon within a canon. You know, the, the Bible, that you know, they called it a canon. Well, let me not use a canon because I'm like, what's a canon? We're talking about like a, 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 no. You're reading a Bible within the Bible. You got your four or five scriptures and you build your whole life on four or five scriptures that make you feel good. So, so that's why I folk can major in somebody else's life <laughs> rather than their own because they got the right scriptures that make their own life feel good. Like, I, I love Peach Cobbler. I, I'm allergic to peanut butter. So if you start feeding me peanut butter, it's going to be easy for me to stop eating it. One little taste. And I'm talking about just a little taste. I have a violent reaction. I don't have to hear sermons preached to me every week about stopping eating peanut butter. 
I've got that. There's no struggle there. You start talking about my peach cobbler. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's going to take the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. How many know you got some peach cobbler situations in your life? Hello, somebody. You over here, you struggling. Every time you come to church, some of us don't even come. Just like, oh, I just hope the preacher don't talk about my peach cobbler today. Because I just can't take it. I just had some last night, and it was good. But the good news, the good news is that even in our struggle, we got a message that we've been dispatched to provide. Come on, stand on your feet, everybody. We're getting ready to pray. We've got a message. That is good news, child of God. That good news that you should dispatch as an angel. Somebody say, I am an angel. Say it again, I am an angel. I am an angel. I'm not a Messiah. I'm not a victim. I am an angel. I've been dispatched to bring good news, to deliver. And it's not good news I have to create. It's good news that has been given to me. And all I got to do is show up and proclaim it. My hiding place, my safe refuge, my treasure, you are my friend and king, my friend and anointed one, anointed most holy. Say it again, my hiding place. Grab the hand of the person next to you. My safe refuge. My treasure, my treasure. You are, you are. My friend and king, my friend. Anointed one. Anointed. Most holy, most holy. This is the good news, God. I will exalt you, God. I, I will, will exalt you. Say it again. I will exalt you. I will exalt you. I will exalt you, God. I will exalt you. You are my God. Say you are my God. One more time. I will exalt you, God. I will exalt you. Hey, I will exalt. I will exalt you. Yes, I will. I will exalt you, God. I will exalt you. You are my God. You are. You are. One more verse. Because you're with me, Lord, say, because you're with me. Because you're with me, God, Lord, because you're with me. Yeah. Because you're with me, because you're with me. I will not fear, Lord, I will not. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm holding my loved one's hand right now. And they're caught in some bad news, some fight, fake news. They can't see or remember the good news. But God, it is good news that I'm touching them today because you have called me to be their reminder. Squeeze their hand real gently. I squeeze their hand to remind them that God is with them. Squeeze their hand to remind them that no weapon formed against them will prosper. I squeeze their hand to remind them that even the fake news, the fake messiahs, they cannot stand the test of time. I squeeze their hand to help remind them that bad news is only time bound. The hard times won't last always, but good news is coming. Good news has arrived. And that good news is that we are forgiven. We are redeemed. 
we are saved. So God, save my loved one that I'm touching. Save them from the worst part of themselves. Save them from their sins. Save them from their pain. Save them from this system of domination, this system of oppression. Save them from hopelessness and depression and, 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 and all the forms of, of degradation. Save them, Lord God, from the evil in the world. And may they be, Lord, overwhelmed with the awareness of good news. Lift your hands right where you stand. It's me, oh Lord. And I'm standing in the need of prayer. It is not my mother. It is not my father. It is not my sister nor my brother. But it is me and I need you. Somebody say, I need you, Lord. Say it again. I need you, Lord. I need you to come and bless. I need you to come and heal. I need you to come and deliver. I need you, Lord. God, help me to be reminded that even in my hard times that you are there with me because you've already come. You've beat me to my worst seasons of life and you're standing right there waiting to walk me through it. Hallelujah. That was a word for somebody. God is beating. He's beat you to your worst season in life. God is standing there waiting for you at the worst moment. And God is saying, I'm going to walk through with you right on through it. Oh, God, walk with us through the worst seasons of our lives. So even our worst moments can become good news because you are there in the name of Jesus. God, touch the relationships in this building that are falling apart. Touch the, Lord God, bodies that are racked with pain and disease. Touch the children that are far off. Touch the relationships. Touch our governor and our mayors and our presidents. Touch every ruler and emperor in this world. And God, let good news overwhelm them so they can be agents of righteousness, of justice and reconciliation. In Jesus' name we pray. If you're here today, you want special prayer, just lift your hand right where you're standing. Lift your hand if you need prayer. We're going to pray for each other. Put your hand on the shoulder of someone next to you. And let's just pray for them. Let's just pray for them. Let's just pray for them. Let's practice the good news today. God, I pray that you will meet every need. Pray that you will heal everybody. Pray that you will save every soul. I pray, God, that you'll do it in the name of Jesus. Do it in the name of Jesus.